What's up peeps? In today's video, I'm taking part in the high-end dupe challenge hosted by Clara over at No Can Do. The piece I chose to try to dupe is this $200 West Elm Hera side table. I'm shooting for spending less than $40. Hang to the end to get my final numbers. Plus, I'm not using a single power tool to create this. So, let's get started. So, surprise, I'm building this entire table using cardboard. Yep, and the base will be built out of these tubes. This challenge, it's supposed to be a fun way to, like, challenge ourselves. So, I'm not aiming for this piece to last the test of time. I'm testing myself to see if I can make a conceptual piece of art that mimics a high-end piece of furniture. I love the rounded edges of this Hera table, and I've been really into funky shapes lately, so this is totally my jam. Speaking of, if challenge videos are your jam, then you're gonna want to check out the whole playlist for this dupe challenge. I'll pin it down in the comments and in the description. Plus, I'll add a link to Clara's channel too. She's so creative, and if you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that. She's just shy of 6,000 subs right now, so maybe we can push her over the top. I glued up these balsa wood discs in stacks of five, and I'm not sure why I only laid out 10 stacks for the video because I did make 12, one for each tube. Anyway, these are the feet. I'm using a generous layer of Gorilla wood glue between each layer of wood. And I made sure to coat from edge to edge. I wanted a good bit of squeeze out on these because like you saw at the start, they were a little shy of filling the tube. So I hoped that the glue would have some grit when it dried. Then I could just kind of like jam that into the cardboard. I finished the rest off camera and left them to dry overnight. I got everything out of clamps the next morning, and I was psyched. The glue pretty much did exactly what I hoped for. There were some rough bits of dried glue exposed on the edges. These tubes weren't all the same size, but that wasn't a big deal. I used twine to hold the tubes together around the middle, and I used masking tape to hold the tubes together on both ends. The feet should level everything out later. It wasn't perfect, but eh, whatever. This is just for me. And I honestly had so much fun figuring it all out, so... Alright. One more to go, and that's... She's connected, at least. One of the things I got to do on this piece was decoupage, and I went super old school, like elementary school old school for this part. I grabbed the weekly circulars, but used the dull paper only, and some matte finish Mod Podge. I used a one-to-one -one mix of podge to water to thin it out. That helps it to sink into the paper a little bit better and through to the cardboard. I started with long strips and went in bands around the entire base. It took me about an hour to do the entire outside of this base. When I finished, it was super cool. There was so much glue on my fingers that I got to peel it off like I was in kindergarten. Yeah, I might have actually giggled just a little bit. <laughs> Once 
once I got myself back under control, I started thinking about the top. There were so many factors at play. For starters, how I'd make a 14 inch wide top when none of my cardboard was wide enough. I cut everything down to get the largest size that I had available. Then I used the top of a hat box to get a perfect 14 inch circle on some taped up paper. I made marks for the center, lined up my cardboard to make sure it would fit, labeled for left and right, cut out the circle, then cut it in half down the center line. I used an X-Acto and a straight edge ruler to cut the middle evenly. Then I kinda wung it cutting the half circle. I just went slowly and cut through multiple times to get through all of the layers. And while I'm doing this, let me take a second to thank some amazing supporters. Big thanks to Jean, or is it Jeannie? Hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, thanks so much for the coffees. And to Judy for these amazing gifties for my Amazon wish list. I'll use all of these for sure. Links to buy me a coffee and my Amazon wish list are linked in the description below. All your support is a huge help to my channel and for me to pursue fun projects like this, and I very much appreciate it. Thanks, peeps! I'm making my piece a bit smaller than the West Elm table, but I want it about the same thickness on top. It's just shy of an inch. So I had to repeat this three more times to give me six halves. I used a generous amount of Gorilla Wood Glue spread edge to edge, and I stacked up each of the three pieces for each of the sides. The brown boxes in the living room, my life is in a never ending state of that old transition. I got a pile up high in the corner of the kitchen, and I'm itching just to find a little bit of unpacked nutrition. All this crap I've accumulated and I've waited for a place that's big enough to fit into. Onward, upward, running with a new herd, too small, you all gotta get a transfer. Packing and I'm stacking and I'm making all my crap fit, gotta shove it all into the brown boxes. I used parchment paper and books to weight down the top so nothing would slide around and things would dry evenly. I did the other side off camera and I left everything to dry and fully cure overnight. But I actually realized overnight that there wouldn't be any structural rigidity in the middle of this tabletop. Even with masking tape and decoupage, it would still be a weak spot down the middle. So I opted to add biscuit joinery. I used the wood discs to cut four skinny rectangles. I lined them up evenly spaced from the center and edges. Then I traced them out on the surface to get the depth that I'd need to carve out of either side. I also marked a center line on the wood so I'd know where to stop pushing this into the cardboard. Using even more wood glue, I added the biscuits to the first side, making sure to stop at that center line I drew. Then that had to fully dry before I'd be able to add the right side. But I hollowed out the right side crevices off camera while this glue dried. I started with a dry fit. It looked good enough to me, so I took it back apart to add glue. Then 
then I pushed it all back together again. Added parchment paper to the top in case of squeeze out, and I stacked books to let it dry under the weight overnight. The next day with everything dry, I cleaned up the edges with 60 grit sandpaper. Then I added masking tape to the center seam on both sides. And I wanted to seal up that outer edge too, so I added tape. I snipped it every inch or so to make it easier to keep things smooth when I adhered it down to the top around the curve. I still had to decoupage the top of the top, so I got that started. I did the same on the underside once the top was dry. Once everything was dry and ready to go, I used a Japan scraper to add a scratch coat of joint compound to the top of the top. For the first coat on the base, I used a disposable chip brush. That way, I could keep the texture directional. That made sanding it to smooth a whole lot easier later. Plus, I didn't want to risk breaking through the paper in the seams with a sharp trowel. Once the second coat was dry, I used a fine grit rad pad to smooth out the brush strokes. The pencil marks you see here are to line up the tube that I plan to have in the front of this piece. To attach the base to the top, I needed a transition piece of cardboard, so I cut a circle that was a bit wider than the base. Used a healthy bit of wood glue, placed the base on the cardboard, and weighted it down to cure for a few hours. I spread a lot of wood glue in the center of the top. placed the base inside the circle, and weighted that down. And I left that to cure overnight. To permanently connect the two pieces, I used more decoupage. Then I added two coats of compound to all the new decoupage and let everything dry fully before sanding. 
the last compound I had to do was on the edge. I used a chip brush to slap on a thick coat. Then I propped the table up on my rotating Lazy Susan, and I gently scraped back the excess with the divot in the side of a stir stick. It was like the perfect size and shape. Score! Once it dried, I sanded everything to smooth and flat. Then it was finally time to get painting. I used Bear's Drywall Primer and Sealer. This stuff is great for sealing in joint compound. And since the whole surface is compound, it seemed like the right choice. Plus, I had it on hand. I did three coats of primer in total, but I did the others off camera. I'm using one of my favorite paints for this finish. This is Faux Effects Set Coat in White. It's a bonding paint and works great on furniture or as a faux finish base. And as all my fellow refinishers know, white is usually a complete pain in the butt to get full coverage, but the pigment in this paint is insane. I did two coats on everything, plus only needed a few spots with a third coat, and I got full coverage. While I add top coat, let's chat numbers. I spent a total of $41 to create this piece, just over my goal of 40. But if I bought the real table, it would run me $238.92, including tax and delivery fees. Wow. I mean, I know this one won't last forever, but I'm not sad I saved almost $200 building this high-end dupe piece of furniture, and I had tons of fun. So if you like funky furniture videos, furniture restorations, makeovers, and faux finishing, then subscribe before you go. And don't forget to check out the playlist. Also, don't forget to thank Clara at No Can Do for hosting all of us. She rules! Hang in for the beauty shots, but that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for being here and watching. Later, peeps! It's all an experiment anyway, right? All an experiment. Can it be done? Can she do it? Does she have the technology? We're gonna need to Mod Podge! Mod Podge!